Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. I'm excited. New packages just arrived. I don't know what's inside, but it's it's definitely gear. Number one, two, and three. I will not open them now, which is really hard. I would love to open them now and know what's inside and play around with new tech. But usually when I do so, I get completely lost and the entire day is kind of gone because I need to find out every little detail and function about the new gear. So I will delay it to later today because first I want to work on music. Finish producing my song about you. It's this close to being finished and ready for mastering. Just a little last, last, last details that need to be fixed and have a follow up to Secrets, which is doing, by the way, really great. It's now at 70,000 plays on Spotify, which is amazing in just two weeks. It's still in the Beatport charts, top 100. So let's make some music. Let's finish another song. All done checking the song, it sounds amazing. I couldn't find any mistakes and there are like special things, usually five to six, that I check before I actually send a song to mastering, like the last step before finishing it. I don't master my songs myself because I think it's important that someone else double checks it, someone that is experienced on another system that exactly knows what's, what's happening at the moment and what kind of media needs what kind of mastering. So I usually check the song in a way where I pretend to master it, to listen to it, what it could sound like master it, so to predict what a master could do to my song. So the first thing I always do is I put a limiter on top because the limiter does the most usually. So here in this case I just used the Ozone Vintage Limiter and pushed it really hard. The song is at uh, minus I8 RMS so like 2 dB louder than I would usually go for. And I'm doing this because this way you will hear how the song will react to a limiter and you will hear that a lot of stuff is kind of amplified on a song that you might have put in there in a subtle way. So for example, my last song, Secrets, there was a white noise, not a white noise, like a vinyl cracking kind of noise in the background just to glue everything together, have some ambient and like that vintage vinyl feel. And after mastering, it was way too loud. It sounded like a mistake in, in recording the vocals. It sounded really bad, so I had to bounce it out again and reduce the, the noise crackling kind of uh, layer by 6 dBs to make it work. So really just vintage limmer on top and threshold just go down and when it starts to distorting really hard back off again but keep it fairly hard to, to hear all of this stuff brought up in the mix because the limiter as you know is like li giving a limit to the, to the ceiling and everything else is pushed towards it so it will amplify a lot of the quiet things that are more in the background and that's a good way to know if it's still as you intended it. If you hear that things are too loud that shouldn't be that loud you have to go back to the full mix. By the way I'm doing all of this always just with the bounced out pre-master wave version that has a headroom of 4 to 6 dB minus of course. That's usually what a mastering engineer needs. The most important is that it doesn't clip. It doesn't matter how much headroom you give them. Just place absolutely no clipping. And I do this for one simple reason. The computer is a lot faster so there are no artifacts while playing back that I might um, mistake for like like a click or, or mistake in the song. So always do it like in a fresh project. The next thing I do is always listening to it. A lot of people forget about it. Just really listen to it. Again, it's nice to have it in a new project so you can't change anything about it. You just listen to it and listen to it on different speakers. Check it out in your car. Check it out on different speakers in your studio. I got here the really huge ones that put out a lot of low end, a lot of volume, and they have the special tweeter, the ribbon one, where you have a lot more high frequencies. And these right here are more like a classic pair of, of speakers, although they have quite a lot of bass for being this small, actually. And my most important speakers for double checking everything are these right here. These are really, really cheap 
10 bucks on Amazon. They are so bad that if it sounds good on them, it's actually fine. Cause it's a lot harder. They have just like this one membrane and like no output at all. And they distort like really fast. If you have too much kick, too much low end, they will just sound really, really bad. So if it sounds good on them, you're actually fine. This means your entire mix is under control and nothing is like overemphasized. Then also listen to different volumes. Turn it up all the way, listen to it really, really loud and listen to it really quiet and, and check if all elements are still audible that are main elements. So if you turn it all the way down and the vocal is too weak compared to the instruments, you know you have to raise the vocal by one or two dB. If it's the other way around, you might have to bury like the guitar a little more in the mix. Maybe the kick isn't cutting through and it needs more of the top end click. It's a really good way to know what's actually happening in your mix. And then the other thing I always do is actually applying a low cut onto the entire mix to be able to check out everything above 200 Hertz and check it out with a correlation meter to see how wide it actually is. I love to have a wide mix, so I try to make everything above like 200 hertz really wide. And then I do the opposite. I cut away the entire top end to 150, 200 hertz. And I check in the correlation meter and of course also by hearing if it's all centered. If you have something bouncing around left and right below 200 hertz, I would probably just try to make it mono. I mean, yes, you can be creative nowadays. There is no vinyl around anymore, but it's still nice to have the low end centered, punchy and strong. So this sounds really okay. There's not a lot of stereo information. Let's do it the other way around. Yeah, that's, that's stereo. I mean, you can also be fancy and go into your EQ and just EQ the left, the right, the mid or the side. But I would always advise before doing these fancy kind of things, just go back to the mix and do it on the individual tracks. Another technical thing I love to do is just play the song and then sweep through the frequencies. If you hold down command on the span analyzer, you can like check out every frequency band on its own. I mean, you can also do it with an EQ. But this way you can check for resonating frequencies. Sometimes there might be like a, a guitar very harsh, some frequencies, then you have to go back into the mix, EQ it away and, and fix it. But these things, these really nerdy detailed things, I just have to check them before releasing. And then the last part is usually listening to like five, six times, very concentrated and checking for um, T's, P's, B's, like mouth noises, clicks, any kind of distortion and just like writing it down. Don't do it immediately, write it down, all of them while listening to it until you can't find any kind of mistake anymore and then go back and fix it. These things are really important to me at least and I think every producer wants to deliver a song to the public that is as perfect as possible and these things are easy fixes. If you have like a click in there, just maybe fade it or you can, worst case, go in and redraw the, the sine wave that makes up the music, or maybe some plugin isn't working correctly, maybe some, some mouth noises need to be removed, need to be cut out, or you need some special RX isotope plugins to get rid of it, but do that. You will hate yourself listening to your track a month later and, and hearing all of these mistakes. There's the no way of going back and changing it again. It's in there forever for everyone to hear, which can be quite embarrassing. So fix it before getting it over to the mastering engineer. And that's pretty much it. The, the song is, I mean, I found a couple of mistakes. I might need just like one or two more hours going in again and, and, and like getting rid of some clicks. I found a couple of clicks and there is like one sound that has artifacts, like an effect sound. I stretched it a little too much. So I might just replace it with another to get rid of it. And then the song is finally all done, all finished. All done with the song. It's 100% finished, ready for mastering. There is no better feeling on this entire planet than finishing a song. 
and then like being able to release it, share it with everyone. And like this one is extremely special because it's actually the follow up to my most successful song, which was called All About. The new one is called About You. And it's very similar in, in the vibe. It's still like different enough to be like a, a new kind of thing, but it's all related. Anyways, it will be out very soon on Spotify, SoundCloud, and everywhere else. If you want to check out my, my recent song, Secrets, and support it, it's also linked down below in the, the description. Now I need to concentrate really quick to not cut myself, because an injured music producer is worthless. A nice on-the-go MIDI keyboard, and yeah. I think the, the two other ones, I will leave them for tomorrow because tomorrow is actually a big studio redesign day. You see this entire studio, I love it. We got the DJ equipment, we got the desk there and I still need a desk and all of the outboard stuff, the speakers. But I also got like a studio downstairs with the vocal booth and everything. And I think it makes more sense to put all of the outboard gear there and all of the cables and um, this, this room will be transformed entirely, like, you'll see tomorrow. It, it will be, it will be cool and epic. And um, yeah, don't forget to tune in. That's it for today. Thanks all for watching. We'll see us tomorrow again here on this channel. Silent.